Hi, and welcome to Cost Accounting. Today we're going to do an exercise like exercise 4.1 in your textbook, and we're going to look at process costing journal entries. So I have the information here, and we're going to go ahead and put it into journal form. So the very first one is letter A, and it says raw materials were issued for use in production molding department. 28,000 and firing department 15,000. So we're going to use work in process which is an inventory account and we're going to separate it by molding department and by the firing department. We're going to keep the cost separates for each department and we're going to say 28,000 for the molding and also 15,000 for the firing department. Now my credit for these transactions is to raw materials. So raw materials were issued out to the other inventory account, work and process molding and firing. Uh, remember that raw materials is also an inventory account. And the total will be for both pieces, 28 plus 15, 43,000. So we'll move on to letter B. For B is direct labor costs were incurred, molding department 28,000 and firing department 15,000. So um, here we are incurring direct labor in those departments. Someone is working in the molding department and someone is working in the firing department. So we are going to again collect those costs and work in process, molding, and work in process, firing. And we'll have to pay these people, so we'll just call it salaries and wages payable. And we're going to put the 26000 in for molding. Oops, that's 2600 Let me add a zero. 26000 in for molding and 33000 in for firing. And the total of those two amounts, the 26 plus the 33, are going to go to salaries and wages payable. So we'll collect the direct labor costs into work and process. It'll become part of the cost of the product, the cost that we're capitalizing for the time being until we sell it, and we'll recognize the payable that we have to pay our employees. Next we have manufacturing overhead applied, the molding department 26,000 and the firing department 33,000. So we're going to say, okay, there were costs being accumulated in the molding department and the firing department and we're going to apply probably using our predetermined overhead rate with the amounts are given to us but we're going to apply some amount of the overhead to work and process and to work and process molding and firing and I'm going to abbreviate M for molding and F for firing since I think we have the idea here and we had uh, 26,000 and 33,000. And we're going to have a total here of 26 plus 33. So now we're going to go on to letter D. And letter D says, unfired molded bricks were transferred from the molding department to the firing department. According to the company's process costing system, the cost of unfired molded bricks were 60000 So what we're going to say is that we had bricks and they were in the molding department. I don't really know a lot about making bricks, but I can assume that perhaps they're more of a clay soft form and we shape them into the brick. And now they're ready to go to the firing department, which they're going to put them in an oven and cook them so they become hard. So they're going to go from one type of inventory to another type of inventory. They're going to the firing department. So I'm going to type work in process, firing. And then I'm going to credit work in process, molding, because I'm taking it from molding to firing. So firing is going to increase, asset accounts are increased with a debit, and the molding in that department, the bricks are going to decrease. We're moving them on, so we're going to credit. So that should make sense. And they told us that according to the process costing system, the bricks were 60000 So I'm going to do 60000 in both accounts. Moving from the firing department or from the molding department to the firing department. Still um, in inventory, 
but from one inventory type to another inventory type. E. Finished bricks were transferred from the firing department to finished goods warehouse. According to the process costing system, the cost of the finished bricks were 118000 So here again, we're saying, okay, we sent them to the oven and they were fired. They became nice hard bricks and they're ready to be sold. Inventory that's ready to be sold should be moved from work and process to finished goods. And that's what we're going to do here. Finished goods is an asset account. It's increased with a debit, so we're going to debit it for 118000 and we are going to credit work and process um, firing because we're moving it from that account into the finished goods account. All right, we're ready for letter F. Oops, not finished goods. Sometimes Excel doesn't like to listen. So we're going to do letter F. And it said finished bricks were sold to customers. According to the company's process costing system, the cost of the finished bricks was 126000 Now, when we did the prior chapter, we also took um, care of the revenue piece. But in letter F, they uh, talk about the cost of the brick. They don't talk at all about the revenue or the sales piece, so we're not going to be able to do that part. We will just focus on the cost. Uh, so what we're saying here is that we don't have the finished bricks anymore. We gave them to the customer. So the value of our finished goods inventory should be dropping. We should have less inventory because we've sold it. And we're going to credit finished goods inventory. Our debit is going to be to an expense account, cost of goods sold. And that is where we recognize the cost of our inventory that we have sold. And I will debit cost of goods sold for 126000 And I will debit finished goods for 126000 And again, at this time, if you had revenue information, you would also recognize the revenue piece of that sale. In this problem, it's not given to us, so we will just stop with the cost of goods sold piece. I hope this helps you with your understanding of um, cost accounting process journal entries, and have a great day.